Hey. For all ladies to be the best versions of ourselves, and if you happen to be a mom, be the best mom ever and maintain your sanity while we do it. Nutrition is your new addiction. Go go on and work it, lady. Yeah, that's how you work it, lady. It's never know, or maybe this is how you get it, baby. War war. All right, everybody. Hey, I am so excited to chat with you uh, on this topic today that has probably been on a lot of our minds for a while now. But real quick, for those of you who are new here, I with today we are going to be talking about do hair relaxers, Brazilian blowouts, keratin treatments, and the like increase uterine cancer risk? Who? I really, really, really am excited to share um, this information with you. Um, you've probably been reading up on it a little bit yourself, um, as you should. Kudos to you if you're doing that, and kudos to you if you're taking the time just to even listen to this conversation today, because, you know, it's nice to talk about all the funny stuff going on online, but it's nice to talk about some serious stuff as well, okay? Um, at the end of this, I am going to share with you a community um, that is affected by this that I don't think people realize. And so I particularly want to do this episode today to raise awareness across the board for everyone. And then especially this um, other group, okay? Because I don't think that they realize that they are in this equation for cancer risk um, for using these products, okay? So for those of you um, who may not be aware, um, I say for about the past year now, we've been seeing these ads online. Most of them are from lawyers, you know, saying, hey, if you have used chemical hair relaxers, contact us. You might be entitled to compensation. Um, lots of women coming out um, and saying that they believe that their uh, uterine cancer was caused by um chemical hair relaxers. Okay. Um, so lots of things happening. And this has kind of been something um, in the community that uses hair relaxers a lot, primarily the black community. We've always kind of been like a little skeptical, like, hey, we love this stuff and it makes our hair straight, but uh, ooh, what are the risks? You know, we kind of been like side eyeing it and doing it all at the same time. Although um, in more recent years, a lot of people do not relax their hair. I actually do not relax my hair. I've only had a hair relaxer in my hair probably six times in my life. Um, I can remember I did one from a wedding day, you know, like special occasions over the years, but it has probably been a solid 10 years since, um, or even more, since I've even touched a hair relaxer, I stopped um, when I worked in salon and had my own salon. I actually stopped performing them for, for clients because I did not want to breathe in the chemicals from them and I did not want to expose my clients as well. Um, you know, so hopefully that was a good thing there. Although there were, uh, I did have like two clients that flat out refused, um, to stop relaxing their hair. They were older ladies and they were just like, look, I've been doing this for years and I'm going to keep going. Um, and most of them were fine. Um, you know, but some weren't, but we don't know what all the risk factors are. Like there's multiple risk factors for cancer. So I'll start by saying, do I believe personally that all these products increase risk? Absolutely. Why do I say that? Um, as we've been learning uh, here, you know, chemicals that are caustic, caustic kind of in short, if you want to think about it, is any chemical that has a strong smell. So like bleach, um, ammonium thioglycolates from relaxers, hydroxides from from relaxers and even essential oils can actually be put into the caustic category, okay? Which just due to their chemical composition does make them, um, you know, something that could induce endocrine effects and be endocrine disruptors. Um, but that's just one way, you know, endocrine disruption is one thing, but then you also think about all the other things that go in with the side effects of these products. So um, 
that's just one risk factor. You know, of course, for cancers, there's many like diet and exer exercise are going to be your main line defenses against developing cancer, regardless of what you've been exposed to. Okay, so um, that is the most important thing to do. Make sure you're up on your nutritional and physical health. Um, you know, we may be able to safely use some of these products, but I am going to dive into the research study today and kind of what happened like online and um, really kind of getting into it. We're even going to talk about the study um, that the information comes from and really touch on a lot of things. And we're even going to talk about the FDA um, through this as well. All right. So Again, disclaimer with me, anything that you get from me here on the podcast is going to be as transparent as I possibly can be. Um, I do not support any like conspiracy theorist ideas and things like that. Are there people in government who, you know, do bad things? Sure. But does the government have an agenda against women to kill us all via hair relaxers and Brazilian blowouts? You know, probably not. So if that, if you're kind of on the latter spectrum, the information to date may not be for you. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and get into it. So what happened is um, National Institutes of Health was doing a study for cancer um, that was called the sister study, which I'm going to put information on the screen for that in just a second. But right now what I have up is the news release from the National Institutes of Health um, regarding what they found in this study. Now, let's talk about this study. So this study that was done by the National Institutes of Health was not specifically a study for one group of women just with hair rela hair relaxing and cancerous. This was actually a very large study that was done on the sisters of women. So I know it's called a sister study. And I think online, some people thought, oh, they called it the sister study because it was a study just on black women and hair relaxers. It wasn't. It was a very large um a diverse study of lots of different women. Um, it was about 50,000. We'll get into exact numbers a little later here. And of course, there were some Black women included in that. Um, but what is interesting to note is in that study, they just basically kind of found a link and a correlation as they were studying a broader topic that actually had nothing to do with hair relaxers. So the study was actually about blood sisters and cancer development. So they were studying fleshly sisters. If one of your sisters, you know, got cancer, they wanted to study those two sisters to look for correlations, um, you know, lifestyle things, everything that they possibly could in efforts to further cancer research. So the main people in the study were women who had a sister who had breast cancer. So this was initially a breast cancer study, but then as they progressed through the study, and this study was over 10 years. Um, now they actually just marked their 20 year um, anniversary for this study. And I believe this is going to continue to be a ongoing one. Um, but that's just my two cents. But yeah, so they, they found when they continuously go back and they look over the data, they find correlations. Like, hey, wait a minute. Um, people who reported using this, this, and this, we see that they have an increased cancer risk. Because um, if you've ever been a part of a research study, you know that like when you go in, you have to tell them all the products you use, what you eat, what you do, like literally everything. So it just so happened that the women who reported chemical hair straightening, not relaxer, that's not the main verbiage that was used on the initial parts of the study, chemical hair straighteners, um, they had an small increased risk for uterine cancer that they noted just from correlations in the data. So that does not necessarily mean that it was solely because of the relaxer. It just showed a correlation between the women who used, excuse me, the hair straightener and um, uterine cancer increased risk. Now, why I want to make sure I'm saying like hair straightener and relaxer, because, and now I'm going to tell you 
what I was referring to, to the group that's being kind of like overlooked in all this and needs to have eyes on this too, is most of the articles out there do use black women and most of the subsequent write-ups um, are coming from the black community regarding hair relaxers and cancers. But Brazilian blowouts and keratin treatments all have the chemicals in them that are being investigated through these studies, okay? So formaldehydes, ammonia, ammonium thioglycates, and actually the Brazilian blowouts and the keratin treatments have a higher percentage. And those are typically very popular in the Latina community and the white community, okay? So we're all included in this at being at risk. So I just want women who you know, they may be glancing over this information online, like you're, you know, scrolling on Instagram and you see, have you used hair relaxer? You know, you might be entitled to compensation or, you know, the FDA, this and that and hair relaxers. And you just see a face of a black woman. And because you were white or Latina, not Afro Latina, you just glance over it and don't pay it any attention when it also pertains to you as well, because it's all, some of those chemicals are very similar. Um, and those relaxers um, that are even higher in formaldehydes are more so used with hair that has a bigger curl pattern, which again is going to be your Latinas and your uh, white ladies. Okay. So, of course, us in the Black community are a part of this because our sodium hydroxide relaxers, which is mostly what we use, are um, included in this, but I just wanted to make sure that all women knew that you need to be having your eyes on this information because regardless of what the person looks like on the box of your hair straightener, or if you're getting it done as like a Brazilian blowout or a keratin treatment, it's still got this stuff in it and you need to be aware, okay? Um, okay, so let's talk about this um, the news release. The news release came out on October 17, 2022, and it was from the National Institutes of Health. And it says hair straightening chemicals associated with higher uterine cancer risk. Okay. And then it says NIH study finds that black women may be more affected due to higher use. Okay. Um, we typically are doing a hair relaxer every six weeks for some people versus a keratin treatment does go out a little bit longer than that. Some people get those done like only twice a year. And then some people also relax their hair, you know, maybe just a couple times a year or do like a text lax. But regardless, you're still being exposed to these chemicals. And I would also encourage those of us um, who are like me, who used to work behind the chair, or if you still work behind the chair, ask yourself if you want to still you know, offer these services because we are going to talk about um, the evaporation and the chemicals, um, you know, when they go into the air as vapor. Um, one of the articles does touch on that, okay? Um, so it basically just kind of says women who use chemical hair straighteners um, were at a higher risk for uterine cancer compared with women who did not report using these products. According to a new study from the National Institutes of Health, the researchers found no association um, with some of the other things like hair dyes, bleach, highlights, or perms. I would say for perms, just that's one to keep your eye on <laughs> because those are very caustic. Um, bleach is typically off scalp, so it's not touching your scalp. So probably not very much of a risk there as are highlights. Highlights are typically done off of the scalp. Um, but perms, you know, that solution does go on your scalp. So, um, you know, yeah. For me, I, you know, from when I was teaching cosmetology um, and I was an educator, once I started really looking at the chemicals and things and being like, hey, wait a minute, I just kind of made the determination on my own certain services. I just was not going to get done very much myself, nor would I, you know, try to do them a lot on other people. Um, sometimes your common sense, girl, you know, <laughs> there isn't going to be a definitive study for everything under the sun, right? So anyway, the study data included 33,497 um, women in the U U.S. Uh, between the ages of 35 and 74 participating in this sister study. I think that was just the 
the bit of information they were looking at when they pulled this because as we'll see on the actual sister study website it does report about 50,000 women okay um so again, um, and the, the thing that they were looking for was to identify risk factors for breast cancer and other health conditions. The women were followed for almost 11 years. And during the time they found 378 uterine cancers um, that were actually diagnosed, okay? So that's just, you know, they're monitoring women. One thing about a case study like this is the main thing is just monitoring monitoring everybody's daily activities to try to pinpoint okay what are causing these issues right it's very good we feel good about our government for doing that right so the researchers found that women of course who you know use the straightening products you know um were almost four times uh more than four times in the previous year were more than twice as likely to develop uterine cancer compared to those who did not use the products and I quote, we estimated that 1.64 of women who never use hair straighteners would go on to develop uterine cancer by age 70. So it, again, that's kind of the control part of the study, right? So regardless if you straighten your hair or not, there's still a 1.64%, you know, chance almost, I guess you could say, you know, that you would still develop urine, uterine cancer by age 70. That's just a life risk that we take. Life is full of risks, okay? But for frequent users, that risk went up by 4.05%, said Alexandra White, PhD, head of the National Institutes of Health, Environment, and Cancer Epidemiology Group, and the lead author of the new study. This doubling rate is concerning. However, it is important to put this information into context. Uterine cancer is a relatively rare type of cancer. So uterine cancer accounts for about 3% of all new cases of cancer, but is the most common cancer of the female reproductive systems with an estimated 65,950 estimated new cases in the year 2022. Studies show that Incident rates of uterine cancer have been rising in the U.S., particularly among Black women. Okay, um, approximately 60% of the participants who reported using hair straighteners in the previous years were self-identified Black women, according to the study published in the Journal of National Cancer Institute. Also, the study did not find that the relationship between straightener use and uterine cancer incident incidents was different by race the adverse health effects the adverse health effects may be greater for black women due to high prevalence of use okay because black women use hair straighteners or relaxer products more frequently and tend to initiate at earlier ages than other races and ethnicities these findings may be more relevant for them said chi jung chang phd an author on the new study and the research fellow research fell a research fellow in the national institutes of health epidemiology branch the findings are consistent with prior studies showing straighteners can increase the risk of hormone related cancers in women the researchers did not collect information on brands or ingredients in the hair products that the women use. However, in the paper, they note that several chemicals that have been found in hair straighteners such as parabens bisphenols bisphenol A's, uh, metals, and formaldehyde, and we'll talk more about the formaldehyde, um, could be contrib contributing to the increased uterine risk cancer observed. Chemical exposure from hair products use, especially straighteners, could be more concerning than other personal care products due to the increase in absorption rate through the scalp, which may be exacerbated by burns and lesions caused by straighteners. Okay, and I quote, to our knowledge, this is the first epidemic study that examined the rate relationship between hair straightening and uterine cancer. More research is needed to confirm these findings in different populations to determine if hair products contribute to health disparities in uterine cancer and to identify specific chemicals that may be increasing the risk of cancers in women. Okay. Um, this team previously also found that permanent hair dye and straighteners may increase breast and ovarian cancer risk. So that is also important to note. Okay. And again, 
you know, I know this is like heavy information, but I like to always keep in mind that these are increased risk. No, you know, it, this study is not saying if you use a chemical relaxer once in your life, you are going to get cancer. It's not saying that. It is saying, though, that more than likely you are increasing your risk. And, you know, that could be one risk is that you're straightening your hair. Then the next risk is you are overweight. And the next risk is you don't drink water often. And the next risk is that you don't exercise. Now you've got four risks. Plus, we're also exposed to other chemicals, right? And, and some of them we can avoid and some of them we cannot. So um, that kind of puts it in perspective, um, you know, that there is a little bit of cause for concern. There is a little bit of cause for concern, but you can't worry yourself to death over this stuff either. You could just basically try to be as safe as you can, do the best you can, you know, um, and that's it. Okay. So now let's talk about the sister study. So that was where I was reading was the original news um, release that the National Institutes of Health did. And I want to say it is very important to know. I, I like the dates on these articles and it strengthens my faith again, in our government and what a great job that they do most of the time in identifying risks and making us aware. There is a lot of information out there that would lead you to think that, you know, our government just does not care um, and that they specifically do not care about, you know, certain groups, which there is some truth to that. Do not get me wrong. But there is still overwhelming instances where we see our government doing a great job um, at making us aware of public health risks. OK, so October 17, 2022, they did their news release. By October 21st, we have major news articles like NPR sounding alarms that the FDA was actually already, and that's not even two weeks later, in motion to start possibly pursuing the idea of banning relaxers and hair straighteners that contain formaldehyde. And I think that's great. It's so, you know, the information was out on the 17th and by the 21st action is being taken. And um, regarding the FDA, since we're on that, let me just go ahead and get that up on the screen. There is a possibility that in April of 2024, either hair straighteners will be um, banned altogether, or they may have um, those ones that have these uh, ingredients of formaldehyde at high levels. Um, those may be uh, going by the wayside. Okay. So let me actually, you know what I'm going to, I'll put this one up, but I'm actually going to be um, sharing the information from do, 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 the FDA. So this is, I'm putting up right now. Um, this was kind of just like a quick clip from the U S food and drug administration website. This is actually, um, older information that they had already warned us about formaldehydes and hair smoothing products. Um, so this is definitely something that they were aware of, um, which is, again, I knew that as a cosmetologist that there were dangers associated with using these products. I was always pretty transparent with my clients regarding that. Um, so it's good to know that we did have some information from the food and drug administration even before this study um well not necessarily the study but the um actual report um went out in october okay so this was i want to say a year before and this is a great little resource you can go on the u.s food and drug administration um you can put in hair relaxer or smoothing products and you'll get a lot of information it will give you links to o osha it will give you um Lots of really good information. Let me see what else it has here. Um, what happens during the hair smoothing process? Why exposure to formaldehyde is so dangerous? The Food and Drug Administration um, shares here formaldehyde exposure, a potential short and long term effects. The greater the exposure to products that contain formaldehyde in terms of both length of time and concentration, the higher the potential health risk. Individuals who have experienced formaldehyde 
exposure have described reactions such as eye problems or irritations, nervous system problems such as dizziness and headaches, respiratory tract problems, sore throat, scratchy throat, cough, wheezing, nausea, chest pain, vomiting, and rashes, and chronic effects associated with formaldehyde can include an increased prevalence of headaches, asthma, contact dermatitis, um, and possibly cancer. Okay, so this was up here as of when did this? When did they put this up here? Do 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 do. Um, that this was three two twenty twenty one. Okay, and there was a ton of other stuff on here just before that. I just thought this article, um, even with the artwork and everything else, did a great job of you know showing this and again here it is talking about the ingredients more so and i appreciate the fact that they use both types of women who are getting this done you know on the left we have a woman who has highly textured hair a black woman and then on the right we have a white woman so you know they're they're trying to make sure everybody is covered and that everybody using products that have these ingredients you know, are understanding the risk and understanding that this is something that could be affecting them. Okay, so I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to read here a little bit from NPR um, more about the FDA, FDA proposing a possible ban on hair relaxers. And then what was so funny, y'all, is then online people were upset about that. Oh, now this is another agenda against black women. Now the government's going to ban relaxers. Well, hey, this is, you know, if the government has this study of these possible links. Why wouldn't they? You know what I mean? People get so up in arms, you know, about our foods and other things, you know, the FDA. Oh, you know, Europe is so much better. You know, they they ban all these things. And then here is the government, our government, the United States government doing a ban. And it's a big problem. Well, I thought that's what everybody was aspiring to be was like Europe that bans everything, which that and again, that's a whole nother thing, but they don't ban everything either. There's many harmful things in their stuff. Some things they have and stuff we're not allowed to have in our stuff that our government has banned. So, you know, it just gets very murky <laughs> sometimes. I'm going to take a drink. So more on NPR on the FDA ban. The Food and Drug Administration is proposing a ban on using chemical on using the chemical formaldehyde as an ingredient in hair relaxers, citing its link to cancer and long term effects. Uh, the new rule proposed by the federal agency would ban the colorless and highly toxic chemicals in high straightening and hair smoothing products, also referred to as relaxers. The target date for the proposed ban is set for April 2024. OK, so for all of y'all who like, look, man, until I leave this earth, I'm relaxing my hair. Ain't nobody going to take my relaxer for me. Girl, go out there and buy as much as you can before April 2024. Um, That's the target date. And again, that's just banning the chemical formaldehyde from being in it. Now, here's the thing, y'all. Anytime an ingredient is banned, what's going to happen? Manufacturers have to get creative and come up with new ways to do the same thing. So that is probably going to result with possibly some more great products coming out or possibly more toxic ones coming out. So when you see these new products, I'm never the first in line for anything, okay? Um, if I see something that's like, you know, formaldehyde free relaxer. Hey, I might not want that because I want to know now, okay, well, what other chemical did you put in to give the same effect? How toxic is that new chemical? Okay. Because at least this, we've got at least 50 years of exposure and information regarding the old school relaxers, our sodium hydroxide, which is our lye relaxers, our non-lye relaxers, and our ammonium thioglycolate relaxers, which are the Brazilian blowout and the keratin treatment relaxers. That's what the chemicals are for those two groups. So we know what the effects are with those um, we know now roughly, you know, you're basically taking like a, a, a four, you're, you're increasing your risk from like a one point whatever percent we reviewed to a four point whatever percent, um, you know, if you decide to use those. 
So we know that now. Um, so then now, 10 years from now, we'll have more information on whatever new thing um, they come out with. But you look, it ain't going to be me because I'm just not going to use my hair is natural. OK, if I want some straight hair, sometimes I'll just add some pieces in that are already straight, you know, um, and, and keep it pushing. You know, wearing your natural hair is a good thing also. But then, too, I understand, you know, some women are very busy, you know, and they want to have a quick, simple hairstyle and relaxing hair is a way to do that. And it can still be done somewhat safely, um, you know, or some people just don't want to, you know, they're, they're not worried about the risk. So it's really a personal choice. I don't shade anybody for whatever they want to do as long as they are able to have access to the information. That's the most important part, making folks aware, you know, whatever we choose to do on our own is up to us. For example, there's tons of people out there. Everybody knows doing drugs are bad, but you still have people lining up to do drugs. Okay. So, you know, tomato, tomato. <laughs> Um, okay, so now we talked about the Food and Drug Administration. Let me go back here onto the sister study. So oh, what a great study this is, you guys. It's very detailed. There's pages upon pages. And they've got a whole a branch website off of the National Institutes of Health that is a whole standalone website on its own with a plethora of information that you can just digest. Okay, so um, just go to National Institutes of Health. The sister study is there. Um, here it is here on the screen. This is a homepage. Um, we did talk a little bit about what the study was about. Um, I want to just go back though and read just that first little bit of homepage. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, here it says the sister study is celebrating 20 years. Um, and then of course it tells us that, you know, every October is breast cancer awareness month. Um, so this is a very large study. Now, if you then, if you're on this homepage that you see now on your screen, if you click on, let me see, do I want to do, okay, so the sister study is conducted by the National Institutes of Health and Environmental Health Scientists, um, and it uh, goes well, but then somewhere else it said that it was still going. Well, this blurb here says 2003 to 2009 with 50,000 women all across the U.S. and Puerto Rico, all between the ages of 35 and 74. It even has a little map and it even shows you by state how um, what the percentage of participants were for each state. So um, very good. Um, who is leading the study. So yeah, to my knowledge, this is still an ongoing study. So um, just keep that in mind, which is great. Um, let me see, four researchers. Um, now, if you click on four researchers, you are kind of given some other things to click and then you can lend uh, land on the demographic characteristics. This is what I was interested in. So with this study, and again, this is everything that you read online, if it was on, you know, ebony.com or essencemagazine.com or somelawyer.com, all of them have been referencing this study. This is a study where they identified a correlation between using hair relaxer and increased uterine cancer risk. OK, um, so again, the percentage of black women in this study was nine percent of the participants. Eighty four percent of the participants were white, non-Hispanic. Five percent were Hispanic and three percent other. Um, so that, you know, those are the numbers there. Um, now I will insert something here. Um, some people always say, why are there never like that many black, Hispanic, or Asians in research study? We don't sign up for them. <laughs> Plain and simple, okay? Um, I know people who have done research study, all of which are white, okay? For whatever reason. And that could be, you know, um, in certain communities, there is more, you know, hesitation, um, you know, and, and trust issues. You know, some of those understandably so, but a study like this is great if more people can participate because there was nothing actually to do. They didn't give you anything. It's just you sign up to be monitored for, you know, 
X amount of time, five years, 10 years. They just monitor you, call you in, ask you some questions. They may do a blood draw and that's pretty much it. So studies like this are great to participate in. Now I have lended uh, some specimens of mine, um, like blood work and other things. Like if I had a procedure done, um, I have lent those um, for research purposes. If you're in an area where um, you can go to a research hospital, you are able to do that. So I have done stuff like that because I'm like, yo, if it's leaving my body anyway, run some tests on it and learn some stuff. And there aren't that many people in the black community that participate. So, hey, all the better. If it helps me and it helps others, why not? Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm not signing up for no brand new drug that y'all, you know, are trying to, you know, do. I understand somebody's gone to. So we really need to give it up for people who are always willing to volunteer <laughs> for research studies. Um, you know, because, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, that's where I draw the line. I'm not letting you stick me with something that you don't know how it works yet. Okay. Uh, sorry about it. You know, so somebody's got to do it, but not me. Right. <laughs> so, and I think a lot of us, um, you know, do feel that way. Although to be fair, a lot of the, um, even like, you know, vaccines or, or different medications now, there's so much research behind the new drug or the new vaccine or whatever, like it's not going to ever really go too far awry because they know now what things not to put in stuff based on like, you know, 80 years of research prior, like, Hey, we put this in something and this happened. Whoop, we ain't putting that in there again. So pretty much like nothing's going to happen. Even if you do choose to participate in a study where you are getting injections or you are taking a new medication, um, you know, and they are monitoring you with those research studies. You're coming in weekly. Sometimes those people even go in daily to, you know, show their specimens and they want to make sure they're not having any adverse events. So if something does go wrong, they are going to catch it like immediately. So for those of you who are interested in doing that, I'm still a little bit of a chicken on that part. But where I can, where, you know, the research studies like this one that are really easy and you don't have to get stuck with anything, you ain't got to take anything orally, I'm all about these. Okay. So, um, yeah, that, that's my blurb on that. So, um, okay, let's move along. We talked about the FDA, um, and then possibly banning, um, the hair relaxers with the formaldehyde. Um, let me see, was there anything else that I needed to cover on this? Oh, I didn't show you this page. So this is this is a page that was really nice um, on the sister study where it did give the demographics of people in the study. Um, and so, you know, go ahead and look at that, you know, on your spare time and you can see the percentages, you know, broken down by race. Even they have the education and, you know, all of those things. Um, there's lots of information in this study, guys. So, yeah, if this interests you or if you know someone who has breast cancer and you would like more information, start here you know um this could be one of your things to just kind of you know have more information on the topic okay so now i wanted to share something else with you um Reuters, uh Rutgers had a um a very interesting article um i'm not going to have time to go over um this one but it did say that um you know this is still a controversial um, topic because they do need more studies to say definitively how much of a risk is, you know, um, these chemicals for uterine cancers. Um, and you have some places like um, breastcancer.org. Uh, they put out a statement in June on June 8, 2021, that basically says some evidence suggests that heavy use of relaxers containing lye might increase estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. Um, you know, things like that. Um, you know, of course, that one is for breast cancer, not uterine cancer. Um, but then, you know, we have other places like um, Boston Medical. Let me see here. Boston Medical had a really good article. So Boston Medical actually took it upon themselves to do a large research study um, among Black women um, for increased uterine cancer risk. And um, 
relaxers. So let me just read a little bit here. A new study by researchers at Boston University's Black Women's uh, Health Study uh, has reported that long-term use of chemical hair relaxers by post-menopausal Black women was associated with increased risk of uterine cancer compared to women who never or rarely used hair relaxers. Those who reported using hair relaxers more than twice a year or more than five for more than five years had a greater than 50% increased risk of uterine cancer. Okay, and this was published on October 11th, 2023, okay? So this is a, a newer study that is a little bit newer than the original one um, that has come out. Um, so, and again, that the, the National Institutes of Health study was not a specific study just for Black women and in, in uterine cancer risk. It was a general study for breast cancer that happened to turn up um, a, a possible link in discovery for uterine cancers with increased um, relaxer use. <laughs> That's the word. Okay. So let's learn a little bit more about this study um, from Boston University. Uh, School of Medicine. And um, it goes on to say that researchers asked nearly 45,000 women um, in the BWHS who had no prior history of cancer and an intact uterus about their past use of chemical hair relaxers. They then followed the women for up to 22 years and compared rates of uterine cancer among women who reported frequent or long-term use of hair relaxers to rates among women who never or rarely use them. They found that among postmenopausal women, rates of uterine cancer were statistically significantly higher for those who commonly use hair relaxers, even after adjustment for their potential risk factors. According to the research, these findings highlight the importance of continued research regarding the potential adverse health effects of exposure to chemical hair relaxers and their constituents. Black women are often underrepresented in health research and may have unique exposure unique exposures that contribute to disparities in the disease. Absolutely true. This study fills an important gap in knowledge about the potential health risk of hair relaxers, which is very common in Black women, said Bertrand, who also is an epidemiologist at the BU's Sloan Epidemiology Center. Okay, so um, very interesting um, study. It was a 22-year study. Um, it was one of those studies, again, where they just gathered a lot of data um, and were able to, you know, just pull the numbers and everything. Um, I think once we start getting into some more um, very specific niche um studies because again studies like this are great but they still do leave a lot unanswered how many of those women were using this particular um hair relaxer how many of those women who developed cancer were also overweight how many of those who um, were in the study also did um drugs you know things like that so then once you kind of get really really you know, definitive like that, you're able to get more of an answer, um, a clearer picture, if you will. Um, but sometimes going that deep is is not needed either. You know, if it's a risk, you know, slap a warning sticker on that bad boy and tell people to beware. And, you know, that's, that's good. Okay. So um, ladies, I just want to kind of review here a little bit. Um, we did cover a lot of information today. As far as me giving my personal opinion, I could do that. In my personal opinion, I feel that as the, you know, the studies suggest, um, it is a potential increased risk for developing breast cancer. However, in my personal opinion, I think that there are other factors that are contributing to the women who are relaxing their hair also um developing cancer most people who are relaxing their hair you know at this date you know they are going to have other factors sometimes that are contributing to that you know now there's this whole natural hair movement and people who are a lot of times a part of that also you know 
they're they're working out, you know, they drink lots of water, they, you know, do all these things. And sometimes with people who want to relax their hair, and I know this might sound a certain type of way, but clients that I had previously who, you know, really it was hard to get them off of their relaxer is because they had very complex lives and they, you know, did not have the time to meet some of their personal needs, you know, um, and, you know, the other things were just, you know, um, it was just hard for them. So again, sometimes people who relax their hair, they just have a lot going on and, you know, they, this probably is not going to be the same person that you're going to see, you know, at the gym every single week. Um, you know, so some of these things also do factor in, um, but most women now, I would say at this point, I'm noticing more natural hair than relaxed hair. Um, but that's just, you know, what I mean, what I've seen in the places that I lived and things like that. Um, I think in certain areas, you are going to see a higher percentage of women, um, black women, um, I should say that relax their hair, um, you know, um, and so that's a thing too. So th those are all things we have to consider. I think in my opinion, again, everybody, regardless of who you are, because as we covered, this is not just something that is for black women only. This information is for anyone who uses any type of hair smoothing, which is anything that produces a permanent change, keratin treatments that are, again, used mostly by white women or Latinas, even Asians, um, women who do Brazilian blowouts, Latinas, Asians, white people, okay? And then those of us who do our cream relaxers are Black and, uh, you know, African and Afro-Latina women um, are going to be included in this, okay? So it's for everybody to be aware of these risks. Um, for me, I'm going to continue on the path that I'm on, um, and that is using the hair, um, doing my hair as, as naturally as I can. Um, for those of you who are like, man, I just, I really don't have the time for natural hair. You could try just not putting it on your scalp because as the studies did suggest, uh, it's a continual contact and it's, that is on your skin, which is absorbing it because these are highly caustic, um, compounds. So you don't want to be putting this on your scalp all the time. Um, some people even do relaxers with cotton in between so that, you know, it stays off of the scalp um, and they're able to straighten their hair that way. And then they rinse it out real quick and it's, you know, very little exposure to the scalp, but you are still breathing it in. As you know, you know, you can smell the relaxer on your head um, and with a keratin or Brazilian blowout, you know, most of those are done in salon because there's so many steps. So you know, it's just one of those things. It just depends on what it is to you. But I would say if at all possible, in my opinion, just try to either greatly limit your exposure, do it like once every two years, maybe just to kind of give you a little bit of a break. Um, You know, if you decide to do that or just don't do it at all, you know, but then at the same time, keeping in mind that, you know, um, life is a risk. And just because you avoid, um, you know, formaldehydes with hair straighteners, you may get them in your essential oils, or you may get them, you know, in your cleaning products, or you may get them in your soap. So you're only going to be able to avoid so, but so much in your life. But this is one that is pretty avoidable. Like you got to use some things like, you know, maybe you don't want to buy the, you know, natural laundry detergents, um, which are still probably going to have similar chemicals in them, but just at a lower rate. Um, or maybe you don't, you know what I mean? So, you know, you just have to make it work for you. Um, but again, that's just my two cents. So I'm thankful that there's so much information on this now. Um, and yeah, there's, there's so much that we can learn from all this. So all right, ladies, if you have any questions on this, please drop me a line. Don't forget your first line defense against all of this girl is regardless of what's in these things that we use, try to keep up with what? Your nutritional and physical health. I'm here to help you with that. 
Also, I think it's important to know some people are very um, angry about this. Um, they feel like big manufacturers just have an agenda to hurt people intentionally. And here's the thing you have to realize. This is something that is always going to be a thing in every single thing that we consume. Um, there are risks associated with using any product and people want a solution for things like their hair. And so manufacturers are able to come up with a way to do that. However, sometimes all of the risks, unfortunately, aren't going to be known until years down the road. So for me, I try to make it my plan. Like when new things come out, I'm just not the first one to try them. For example, like Botox. I remember when Botox first came out. Now Botox has been around well over 10 years, probably 15, pushing 20 years. I remember being little and people started talking about Botox or whatever. But now it's been around so long. They know what the risks are, which is very low risk. Um, you you know, it's, it's really not even a big thing. Um, so again, we don't know that though until years later. And there have been, you know, instances and adverse effects with Botox. Um, but again, you're not going to know because things have to be studied out over time. There are certain safety precautions for things that they do know, such as what percentages of what chemicals should be in things. And even with this study with hair relaxers, Overall, those participants went from having a one point whatever increased risk to a four point whatever increased risk. This even in its state that it is in now with the relaxers, it's not like, you know, it's a 50-50 chance or a 60-40 chance if you use a hair relaxer, you are going to get uterine cancer. You know, these are still overall pretty small increases in risk to our health. You know, we are putting our health more at risk by not exercising. Um, those numbers are much higher and we're putting ourselves at risk by not eating raw fruits and vegetables. Those numbers are far higher as risk factors for developing diseases. So again, that kind of helps to put it into perspective. Um, this is just, it is what it is. You know, people think, oh, I want to color my hair, but it also is going to come with some risk. And even if they re-engineer the product, some of those risks are still going to be there. They might become decreased or they may even become increased. And the only way to know is time is going to tell. So there is not a manufacturing like, you know, evil person behind all of this who's just like, I want to, you know, make people sick. So we're going to put all this stuff in here to make people sick. It's just the cost of like living. It's the cost of having all these convenience products and things that we can do. Every single thing comes with a risk. Getting in your car comes with a risk. So if you're mad about this, I can understand, you know, um, to a large degree because, you know, maybe you just were never aware, but we've all known for quite some time that any chemicals that you're exposed to are going to give you an increased cancer risk, be that a hair relaxer, bleach, whatever it is, it is going to give you an increased risk. So most of us still went in using these, knowing the risk, not really knowing exactly what there are and just hoping for the best. So um, I could understand if you were a person who, you know, regularly use relaxers, you know, um, every six weeks and everything. I think that there is some um, understanding there for being angry. I would definitely understand, you know, you're not thinking that's going to be a risk, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but at the same time too, you know, we do know that certain things, chemicals like that are risky, you know? So, um, but again, everybody's entitled to how they're, how they feel. Um, but what I think, if you are someone who, you know, did not get uterine cancer um, and you have not been using hair relaxers, I don't see, you know, a reason to be, you know, going on the vein of conspiracy theory and thinking it's like a big conspiracy to, you know, um, hurt people. Um, I just don't feel that it is. And if that's the case, you know, fried chicken, um, pork rinds, uh you know, um, even like the Korean um, fried pork belly, all those are carcinogenic, 
they're toxic. They'll give you cancer too. So then we got to start slapping warning labels on literally every aspect of our life. Um, you know, which some of them need warning labels. I believe hair relaxers should say on them, this product may be potentially cancer causing. Now, even if they do that, you're still going to have a ton of people using them, even though that's slapped right on there. Um, in the state of California, on the McDonald's, right before you go in, it says things in this facility are known to cause cancer and everybody's still rolling up in there to eat McDonald's. So we can't really fault the government for every single thing and we can't fault the manufacturers for everything most of the stuff is out there most of the information that we need to keep us safe is out there you know but we do make some of the choices that we make so um yeah i will hope that they actually do ban the relaxers um that have these specific chemicals in them or if they need to be banned altogether hey we will be natural up in this together okay and call it a day <laughs> all right Go ahead and give me a follow on Instagram. I would very much appreciate it. And also, if you are watching on YouTube or you are, um, you know, listening on podcast, go ahead and give me a subscribe. I would appreciate it. All righty. See you next time. Bye. Bye.